Hello everyone, I'm making this video to show you a whole bunch of small details related to the quest with Dandelion's women in The Witcher 3. The quest is called Broken Flowers and making this video was a bit of a logistical nightmare with all the different tiny things that change in the different ways and orders in which you completed, so I hope I don't get lost in my own footage here. Alright, without further delay, let's start with Molly. Is Molly a horse? Pardon? Most of you know that there aren't many major differences in The Witcher 3 based on your choices in The Witcher 2. Other than the ending choice with Letho, I suppose, allowing him to join you at Kaer Morhen if he survived. But this here is probably the second biggest change. Depending on your choice with Aryan Lavalette during the intro of the second game, the entire Molly section of this quest changes quite significantly. At the very start of it, you meet the Baroness Lavalette, Aryan's mother, and if you spared his life in the second game, she's quite talkative and in a cheerful mood throughout the entire quest. Care to partake of some sophisticated diversion? What a thrill! A beautiful victory! Thanks. But if you killed him, she instantly refuses to join you and she never comes to the races. There's no one here who wishes to see you. Captain, this man is not to enter. Forgive me, Morvran, but I've lost my appetite for the races. Kill a woman's son and appear at her doorstep? My, my. I thought witches had better survival skills than that. Which in turn changes a lot of the dialogue with Morvran afterwards. First about Molly and how she in fact became a noble woman in case you killed the Baroness son. After Arian's demise, Luis's nephew came to pay his respects. Got one clance of Molly and, well, they wed soon after. They now await his inheritance. With the Baroness's son dead, the estate will go to the nephew and Lady Lata known until recently simply as Molly. And later the dialogue when picking each of the four horses during the race is different as well. Think I'll give you a run on the Zeracanian Bay. Cantarella for me then! Heard tales of Zeracanian horses. I'll ride the bay. I'll not ride with you, but I shall bet on a steed. Nemrod will win, no matter the rider. I'll ride Nemrod. Pit a Nilfgaardian stallion against a Nilfgaardian general. The Black's your favorite? Let's see what a Nilfgaardian stallion's made of. I'll not race. However, I will wager on a winner. The Grey Mare's my choice. In that case, I shall try my luck on the Zeracanian Bay. There is a nice reference to Kair from the books, which can be missed easily under the wrong circumstances here. Think I'll take the Grey Mare. The Grey Mare looks nimble. Besides, knew a man named Kair once. I'll go with her. I'll not ride with you, but I shall bet on a steed. Also, and this goes way back to a video I made a year or two ago, I wonder if any of you remembers this, but back then I was told by a viewer that if you visit Radovid's ship before this quest, you will mention that he's docked nearby when choosing the Redanian horse. And despite my attempts at triggering this, I could never do it. Well, it seems I finally figured it out, and it doesn't depend on whether or not you've been to Radovid's ship, but on whether the Baroness is with you. Hmm, Redanian chestnut looks promising. Radovid's encamped nearby. Redanian chestnut might want to impress its king. I'll not ride with you, but I shall bet on a steed. And as I mentioned, in case you killed her son, Molly is no longer a servant. The Baroness don't approve of our acquaintance. Says dandelions are good for nothing layabout. Can you imagine? Instead, she's a noble lady. I'm under the impression dandelion thinks you still serve the lavalettes. Oh, that's because I never told him I stopped. Didn't want him to treat me any different. And your husband has nothing against it? Your old friendship? Course not. Sweetiekins couldn't be happier that Dandelion's raising me sophistication. And the differences based on the Witcher 2 choice don't end here. There's a small detail during the masquerade with Triss as well. If you wander outside the labyrinth, you can actually find Lady Lavalette among the guests, and your exchange with her will be different based on her son's fate. Is that you? Geralt of Rivia? And Triss? 
I did not see you on the guest list. Baroness, we're here as friends of the family. As am I. Yet my name was there, at the very top of the list. Not at all surprising, my lady. These courtesies grow tiresome quickly. Why are you here? I think you should ask Lady Vagelbud. I shall. Believe you me. Is it you? I cannot believe this. How dare you show yourself here? I shall speak to Ingrid and... She's the one invited me. Clearly, she's not heard enough about you. The Baroness Lavalette? Unfortunately. Afterwards, for a brief moment, you can even spot her trying to question the host about why Geralt is here. Geralt of Rivia is in attendance. I saw him. Who? Jared? Is that the Count with the bad teeth? No Count. A lowly witcher. And his teeth are in good order. In fact, I'd been meaning to ask you. But we interrupt her just in time. Uh, excuse me a moment. So there are a ton of small details here, as you can tell. Another one is a brief exchange between the Baroness and Morvran. This can only be heard if Aryan is alive and if you approach them after telling them that you won't be traveling with them from Novigrad and instead make your own way here. Soothing. The scent of the freshly cut lawn. Not all appreciate it. The races are a privilege of the wealthy. Some of the wealthy are too occupied minding their wealth to appreciate any form of diversion. Fortunately, you do not number among them, milady. Perhaps because the Imperial Army seized most of my wealth. One mystery still remains, however. Another viewer, by the name of Raphael, told me some time ago that there is a hidden dialogue with the Baroness here, during the Broken Flowers quest, if you've already completed the Gwent tournament in Novigrad. He did not give any specifics, but I naturally assumed that it has to be connected to Cantarella. This is because one of the horses during the race has the same name. The Grey is Cantarella, sired by Cahir, the champion from Vol. Yeah, Grey is a good color, even looks good on horses. But sadly, I did not trigger anything unique here when I tried it. I even made sure to sleep with her and get the letter. Hmm, <laughs> slipped away without a word. Which, by the way, is a neat little inside joke on the sheer amount of notes and letters that Geralt carries around with him all the time. But anyway, if any of you knows what Mr. Raphael is talking about here, please let us know. Or perhaps he can do it himself if he's watching. Alright, we move on to Rosa Varatra. Quiet. Ooh, now that's a mentor. Strong and decisive. Perhaps it's time I took up swordplay. Fun fact, that's how my second daughter is called. Minus the Varatra part. So, first off, there is a small reference to meeting her father during the initial conversation with Zoltan. Alright, but Varatra? Her dad happened to be the Nilfgaardian ambassador? Yes, you know him? Wouldn't say that. Had a brief conversation with him at the palace in Vizima. Well, then you have a good notion of the kind of bloke he is. This is if you spoke to him after talking to Yennefer way back in Vizima. Yennefer suggested I ask you about current events, the war and so on. But back to the actual quest, as you approach the Nilfgaardian embassy, you may not have noticed a certain painting on one of its walls, um, clearly drawn by people who dislike them, and the inscription is a little tricky to translate because it's actually mirrored the Gallic script. But if you set it straight, it forms the English letters for We will burn you, piece by piece. Another thing you may have heard, although you probably didn't because there are usually a hundred NPCs talking at the same time here. Scrambled out the hole in the back wall. Maybe so. Both misses are fond of fruit. Our beloved Novigrad. But the guard captain outside is talking about the dead body you find behind the house. He chased a lover and he supposedly escaped through the hole in the wall, but apparently he didn't make it far. Okay, what else? Uh, you probably overheard the actual conversation as you enter from behind, but what you may have missed here is that there's a funny little extra dialogue if you previously tried to enter from the front by pretending to be the new cook. I'm the new cook. And them pointy things sticking out behind you, they your cleavers? Away with you, vagrant. 
This is Frederick Francis de Bergerac, my new swordplay instructor, correct? Show him to the training room. I shall join him shortly. But miss, he just claimed to be the cook. He's a cheat, he is. <laughs> See, Frederick, did I not warn you not to jest with the guards? They haven't any sense of humor whatever. Now take Master de Bergerac to the training room, quickly. As you say, miss. Now on to the conversation with the twins. Something I recently figured out is that Rosa will ask you to come tomorrow for extra private lessons only if you win both sparring sessions against her. Awfully convincing, miss. Wonder where you learned it. Name the time and place. If you only win the second, she will make a comment about how you should teach her some more, but she will never actually invite you. And just in case, here are her reactions if you lose both. Is there not one competent instructor in this entire city? I'm not actually your swordplay instructor. Really? Then who are you? And how on earth did you get in? Ha! I win! My, you really are a lousy swordsman. In fact, I believe I could teach you a thing or two. Not sure I can possibly pass up lessons from such a skilled young lady. So the next day, during her quest, she has a neat little dialogue if you let her win, calling herself the Black Bruxa. Just don't want to see anyone crying later. I've a hanky for you, just in case. On guard! Ha! Be grateful I'm no Bruxa or Alp, else you would be dead already. Well done. Actually is something of a Bruxa in the way you fight. Perhaps I should have them call me that. The Black Bruxa? black because, you know, Nilfgaard. Unfortunately afterwards, there isn't anything special if you run away and leave her with the thugs. Piss. Off. The quest will fail, but if you return to the place you won't find anything, and instead she can be found back at her house. K-Swex. K-Swex. One difference though, is that if you help her deal with them, the front door will be open for you. And if you run away, you will only be able to enter by sneaking from the back again. However, speaking of running away from a fight, let's talk about Vespula. Claim she was his niece from Kovir. Ha! <laughs> Horvir, more likely. I've already made a video about that a while ago, but I will mention it briefly again here because I love it. So, you know the bandits who attack her? Horsens, no banker! You can actually run away from them once the fight begins, and that will result in a rather unique scene with her, where she's all bloodied and messed up, and she will remain so for the rest of the conversation. You're back. Honestly, don't know why. Claimed you'd defend me, then ran for your life. Pfft, some hero you are. I'd have done better if you'd never butted in. Might have parley with those rogues, agreed something. This way, all I had's been smashed to pieces. Come on, far as I remember, I didn't make you any promises. Oh, typical. You men always say that. Leave us women to deal with the consequences. <sighs> Damn it all. I'll move myself to Oxenfurt. Professor's pantaloons need washing too. Sadly, regardless of your choices, her model is always a little messed up. You know, around the edges of her clothing. Hopefully that gets fixed in the Enhanced Edition. And one more thing to mention here is that you can make the bandits leave not just by paying them, but by claiming that she's under the protection of the King of Beggars. Or you need a demonstration. Come on, Fritz. Boss wants it that way. It's how it's gotta be. Also, something else to note about all three women is that the ending of the encounter with each of them changes slightly if they are the last one you talk to because you already have some prior knowledge from the others about that woman Dandelion was with, aka Priscilla. Course it's so tight her eyes were popping out her head. His too, come to think of it. An artist or a whore, doesn't much matter as they're one in the same. Apparently Dandelion was seeing a Troberitz, a blonde most likely. That's the one? Wait, what was that name? Kalanetta. Sounds like an artist, a foreigner and a whore. Three in one. But who knows, the bard might have invented her just to make us jealous. 
pitiful chorister. I'd say it worked. You've gone all red in the face just talking about it. This woman. Not a local, right? Hmm. I seem to remember him praising her melodious Kaviri accent. Makes sense. He referred to her as Kalonetta a few times. Bizarre names are common in Kavir. Know where I can find her, Dandelion's sister? I know. Whenever I ask Dandelion when we visit her, he'd grow all quiet and then change the subject. Yes, yes. Now I remember. She's a travelling performer. Sailed in from Kavir. Talented family, innit? Exceptionally. And very loving as well, I'm sure. If you only knew. Dandelion even wrote a poem for her. To my dearest Kalanetta. Or some such. Oh, to have a brother like that. Okay, moving on to Elihal and Marabella. Radovid sucks flaccid c- One curious thing I recently learned about them from a viewer by the name of Laxador, I'm gonna say. So the thing is that meeting them is not essential. The quest can progress without it. One curious thing this leads to is that later on when you prepare for the masquerade with Triss, you won't know who Elihal is or where his shop is located. You're kidding, right? We have to prepare, change clothes, most importantly buy our masks. I bet you can get everything we need for the ball at Elihal's shop, you know it? No, where is it? Non-human shanty town, you should find it easily. Just masks, right? Probably don't need to wear a doublet, do I? A doublet, Geralt. Now sadly, you miss out on all the dialogue about his curious nature if you don't meet him during Dandelion's quest. And finally we have Marabella. Crack! If you want to get most of your encounter with her, you basically have to be as shameless as you can. And speaking of that, let me plug my Zoltan and Geralt mix. You have to go listen to it after this video. Okay, back to Marabella. When you talk to her, she'll ask you to wait outside. Wait outside, class is in session. Don't. Sorry, can't wait. Say that you can't wait and that will trigger a funny exchange with the children where you can talk about uh, Witcher's libido and killing kings and uh, there are a lot of memorable exchanges there. What's it mean that witches are lecherous? Means they go to sleep early. Oh, so that's why mum went to tuck that witcher in. Children, when a girl likes a witcher, the witcher says, what will you give me for killing a monster? And she says, anything you want. So the witcher says, Hehehe, <laughs> then you'll give me something you weren't expecting at all. And that's where little witches come from. A man cursed, who's turned into a monster, a witcher might have to kill, even if he's a king. So King Fortest was a monster. What's it like to cut off someone's head? Can you show us how to cut off a head? Can we try your potions? Enough. And possibly the single most important detail related to Marabella is that if you released the mother of the crones after she promised that she will rescue the children of the Crookback Bog, you will find a list of names here suggesting that somehow they made it to this place and are now safe. Alright, with that said, I believe we're done. Tell me what you thought of all this. Was there anything you missed or anything else you think I should have included? Also, I've just passed 2000 hours of played time in The Witcher 3, but there are still some things to try and to talk about, so until then, thank you very much for watching, thank you for your support, stay tuned, and be good. exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> Dwarf never suspected he'd be so humble. Triss? Yennefer, perchance? Couple times. Her and the Wild Hunt. Oh. Mm. Mm.